Now, another thing about voltage drop testing is you have issues sometimes where the circuit you're testing doesn't really have the current flow going through it like it should. And it may not be due to the fact you have a big voltage drop from a large resistance source in the wiring or the connections. It could be a, a couple of problems. It could be the wiring and connections in addition to a component that's either inoperative or not drawing enough current as it normally would. Now, this fuel pump probably is drawing the correct amount of fuel, that it sh or a current, I should say, as it pumps fuel, that it should, but that's not always going to be the case. You can have a fuel pump that's faulty and a connection issue. So how do you determine if you've got one or both of those problems? If you have a circuit going to a load and that load is not functional or not fully functional, the current flow goes down and what will the voltage drop do? When the voltage when the current flow in the circuit goes down, the voltage drop goes down. And a low voltage drop, that's a good thing, right? So we can see a falsely low voltage drop on a crummy connection or like we have here, the frayed wiring, simply because we're not seeing the whole picture. We don't have a good load either, a good component. So what we want to do in cases like that is use a load substitute. Now there's lots of different products out there in the market that are designed to do that. For the electronic technicians, for years and years, they've used a product called a decade box, which has a lot of different resistive loads that can be substituted into the circuit. And there's other companies that make automotive versions of that that are very effective. However, my experience is when I go out and I do live training out in the road, those techs don't have those tools. So they're a little bit rare. So for those of us who don't have uh, an official load test tool or a decade box like an electronics tech would use, we've got MacGyver type tools, innovative stuff. Most all of you have used a headlight as a load substitute before. We want to talk a little bit about that for a minute. And in order to use something like a headlight, which we know it works and we know it's going to draw a certain amount of current, which we can load the circuit down and do a proper voltage test, we have to have some jumper leads. Now, I've got a couple of sets of jumper leads here and they're different sizes. What size do you use? Well, you use a size of jumper lead appropriate for the circuit you're working with. Obviously, if you're working with a high current blower motor, I wouldn't use a little jumper lead like this. I might use something like this, which is 12 gauge wire. You want to make sure your alligator clips are soldered and really got good connection and you want to make sure you check it with an ohmmeter and voltage drop your own set of leads in your test circuit before you enter it into the vehicle's harness. What we're going to do is have jumper wires in series with the vehicle's harness in order for me to connect my headlight into the circuit. We can have all sorts of problems doing that. And what happens is we have crummy tools, or I should say they were, at one time they were good tools, but you know how we were rough with our tools and just wear and tear in proper use can still beat them up and tear them up. We can have bad tools, bad wiring and so forth, and then we think we have a problem with the car's harness and we probably don't. So an example here, this is a little jumper wire. That'd be fine if you're doing a voltage load substitute, voltage drop test with a substitute load on a really low current circuit, maybe a turn light or, or, or a computer sensor or something. But if we can get a close up of this alligator clip, this has gotten warm and I probably used it on a circuit I shouldn't have at one time and warmed it up and now we've got a really bad looking connection. I don't really want to trust that either end here. This looks really bad as well. So what do you do when you got a jumper wire that looks a little suspicious? You know, my son worked for years at a company that rented high-end video equipment. Cables and things like that were part of his job to test. And when he found one that was bad, they didn't say, oh, we'll put it over here in a corner and we'll fix it someday. First thing they did is took out a pair of cutters and it might break your heart, but they just chop that lend off. So now you're not going to use it. So I suggest you do that with some of your jumper leads and test leads and so forth. If they're all frayed and you think you're going to fix them someday, that's great. Go we'll fix them someday. But so you won't accidentally pick them up out of your toolbox and use them and fake yourself out and have a problem on top of maybe a problem with the vehicle, chop the ends off or throw them away, whatever. 
but make sure you, you've done something to make sure that you're not going to use that until you can repair it or replace it. So let's go ahead and get started with some uh, jumper leads and actually substitute this load in place of this fuel pump for this test. Now, when you're using jumper leads, you also need to make sure that you fuse the circuit. So if you're introducing power and ground on one end of a set of wires and a harness, uh, make sure you fuse it like the car would fuse it. So I've got myself a jumper lead here. I'm using a, uh, a banana plug on this end because uh, I have a substitute load tool I use on, on vehicles in my shop. And on the other end, I have a, a choice between using that banana plug or an alligator clip. So we'll, we'll MacGyver up a situation here where we can use this. And we've got, of course, the inline fuse in case I accidentally touch things together. I'm not going to burn up a harness or burn up my little test leads. I'm just going to pop that fuse. So we're going to head, the first thing we do is remove the vehicle's component, which is our electrical load on the circuit, and substitute it with this load. So I've got to unplug the connections here. And in this little simulation, I've just got some simple little wiring terminals, not like the connector in the car. Now, I'll get my meter leads out of the way. And here's my, my source of power, and here's my source of ground from my power supply. And there's the bad wire, which we may or not, may not see, as I mentioned, uh, on the vehicle, maybe hidden somewhere. And here's the terminals that are going to go to my load. Well, these terminals won't fit this headlight, so I'll use some jumper leads. So here's the, the fused jumper lead. I'm going to actually use that on the ground, keeping with black to black, so I don't confuse myself. And now I'm going to need to be able to connect into the headlight. So we'll do that with this. So here's my ground through the fuse. And I'll connect in with this red lead to one side of the headlight. Now I've got to connect the other part of the vehicle harness to the other side of the headlight connection. So now the headlight becomes what the fuel pump was doing. Now it's not going to draw as much current as the fuel pump. So you're going to have to be the judge on whatever it is you're testing. You want to simulate as close to possible the kind of current draw that device should take. And this is about eight or nine ohm or eight or nine amp pump. And then we'll see what this draws. It's not going to be that much. It might be three or four ohms, but at least it is some current, more than what a meter would put on the circuit, to kind of exercise the circuit and see what's going on so we don't have to rely on, you know, is it a bad pump and bad wiring or just bad wiring? Which is it? So now I'm going to take another test lead and I'm going to get, I got to get from point A to point B. We'll use this one. And my point B here, point A and point B would be the other end of the vehicle harness and then over here to the other side of the headlamp and that should give me a complete circuit. And when I turn on that power supply, that headlight should light. And it does, all right? So now what do I do? I can do a couple things, just like we've been doing so far throughout this program. I can take my voltmeter and do a voltage drop test on a live substitute load loaded circuit. So here's my voltmeter leads. Let's go ahead and use alligator clips on both ends. Where would we measure? Well, let's go ahead and measure the voltage supplied to this headlamp. That's what I always like to do first. Measure the voltage I've got at the battery. And uh, what did I do? I put alligators on. I'm going to have to go back to my little probes. So we'll do that first, just to make sure we have a number to move from. Well, I'll turn my meter on to volts. It's gone to sleep. There, we're back awake now. And the voltage, when I flip the power supply on, it's on, is 13.9, almost 14 volts, like charging voltage, all right? Now let's measure the voltage we're finally getting to the headlight. And we have got 13.2. Well, that's acceptable. That's about uh, maybe 7 tenths of a volt, maybe a little on the high side, and obviously we know what's causing that voltage drop not only my leads, but probably this problem with the harness here on the vehicle. So if you wanted to find out, the, again, if the problem is on the power of the ground side, measure the ground drop first, and that's going to be from here through my black fuse lead. And let's go ahead and measure it up to the source of my ground, which comes in right down here. This is where it takes some concentration and not forgetting what's what. 
as you're doing these tests, and we've got about 0.17, like we saw earlier with the fuel pump working, 0.17 volts voltage drop, and where's the rest of that voltage drop coming from? We do the power side now, between here and here, and there is a little bit less on that side right now. Now if we wiggle the wires, just as the Ford engine management system, the wiggle, key, key on, engine off, wiggle test, all those kind of things, we do our wiggling. And now the headlight's flickering. What is the voltage drop when I do an open circuit? And I don't think I'm measuring where I want to measure. Uh, see, I want one lead, actually. If we're measuring that red, red wire there, I want it over here. There's my input of power into the red circuit, and there's the output going to the motor. Point one, make an open circuit. Now we have 13 volts. So an open circuit, how much voltage drop do you see? Full system voltage, 13 volts. How about if we have just one little connector making and breaking? You can see we're going between 13 volts of voltage drop and maybe two tenths or four tenths fluctuating. That's what you're looking for, wiggling, looking for temperature changes, looking for voltage drops to increase towards high voltage from the acceptable half a volt on lower uh, current circuits to the acceptable of a volt, volt and a half on higher current circuits, depending on how much current's flowing is how much you allow for voltage drops. But that's what you do with the substitute load in place of the load you're not sure if it's drawing the right amount of current. Now, if you want to know how much that should draw, we can simply connect directly to the headlight without any jumper leads. We'll just connect our power source from the vehicle to the headlight. Still going to need a jumper wire on one side. There's my ground jumper wire. And here is my ground from the vehicle. So we'll take the vehicle's harness out of, out of the picture, like so. And now the power source and the ground, there's my ground. We'll run it through here. And here's my power. I'll hook it directly up to the headlight. How much current should flow? Let's turn on our amp probe. Measuring current going through this circuit. You can measure it anywhere you like. And we're drawing three amps. With a voltage drop, what's the amperage do? The amperage goes down as well. So if you're used to using your favorite headlight, you know it should draw three amps. If you're only seeing two amps, you've got a voltage drop somewhere. Remember, Ohm's law never lies. Amps, ohms, and volts, they're always related with that math. It works every time. I hope this test has helped you figure out a little bit more about some of the mysteries about voltage drop testing done properly.